What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys and gals, what's going on? Don't ever wait for your doctor to order blood tests. With Private MD Labs, you can get your blood test prescription online in under one minute and go directly to over 4,000 lab locations in the United States. They offer every blood test imaginable at affordable prices with highly accurate results from tried and true state-of-the-art blood testing diagnostics. In fact, I've been using Private MD Labs for more than a decade. Their blood tests are much more in-depth and accurate than any at-home pinprick or worthless saliva test. Skip the intrusive doctor questions and get the exact tests that I recommend. Be proactive and get your panels today. Go to privatemdlabs.com forward slash JC to take 15% off your order. Send you guys love and light. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay Campbell. And of course you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual StreamYard studio with an amazing man named Dylan Charles. Dylan, what is up, brother? How are you? I'm great. Stellar, I think is the word I used when we first jumped on. So yeah, I'm going to stick with that one. Stellar. Uh, Dylan Dylan is actually interstellar, but we'll get back to that in a second. So uh, guys, Dylan is an amazing human. He is literally the editor of Waking Times. I've been reading his stuff for so long and it's an honor to have him on my show today. But let me give you guys his bio if you Mm -hmm. don't know who he is. Uh, he is literally a self-mastery and self-sabotage coach. As I said, the editor of Waking Times, and he's host of the Battered Souls podcast, truth teller, passionate advocate of personal liberty and accountability. His journey of self-discovery began 20 years ago when he chose personal responsibility over dependency on psychiatry, psychiatry, psychiatry and pills and began studying Kung Fu. That's awesome. To free his body, mind, and spirit from self-sabotage, Dylan's perspective is heavily influenced by his work with the shamanic plant, ayahuasca, and iboga. Today, he lives in Asheville, North Carolina with his wife of 24 years and their three children. Again, dude, it's an honor to have you here today. This is going to be an awesome conversation. Um, We find ourselves, you know, here on today's (laughs) April 7th, precarious times, right? We, We were talking about how, like, the entire fabric of the you know, third dimensional space time construct could seemingly unravel at every second. But, you know, just, just give me your perspective. Are you positive, which I'm assuming you are, but like, do you see us creating the golden age in the new earth after we get through whatever we got to get through? Mm, That's an interesting question. Sounds lovely. It sounds wonderful. It sounds so good. Good, good, good. It sounds nice. The golden age, but uh, I think we have some hard times ahead of us, to be honest with you. I don't know, you know, and I don't, I mean, I'm 46. Like I said, we talked about children. I've got a 10 year old, 14 and a 17 year old. So I really think that their generation and the generation after that are the ones who are going to be able to answer that question because yeah, things are, things are out of our hands to a degree. And so that's one of the things I think that's really important to focus and concentrate people on because I'm sure you see it too, man. People are really, really wrapped up and wanting to know what's going on and doing their best to try to understand what's going on. And there's a lot of different narratives that you can subscribe to, but I mean, right now more than ever, it's it's really important that you bring it all back into yourself and focus and produce, produce in your own life, make your own life tidy, work on cleaning yourself up because you need to be strong. And to be strong, you have to recoup your power from everything that's going on. And so one of the ways I see people really losing their power and spending their energy is just getting stuck in these narratives, whether it's doom scrolling or believing in things that they, they don't have any control over that are outside of their all, all their six senses, you know? So, yeah, so that may be true. Uh, Jay, we may be headed for a golden age, but I mean, I gotta, I gotta get through today. I gotta get through this month, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. As my good friend Rex Bear says, bills and issues, everybody's got them, right? Like you're living in the third dimension, you got to deal with it. Um, So Mm -hmm. we were talking, yeah, we were talking off air about, you know, an interesting perspective uh, about people who are still, you know, even today now at this point where pretty much all the mask restrictions across the country are down. Right. People are, you know, what I, I refer to as captured, you know, they, they, they pretty much have been driven into this paral paralytic state of fear yeah. From the narrative, as you called it, the news media, whatever the doom, the doom scroll cycle. I mean, can you kind of comment on like where humanity is in that regard? 
The first word that comes to mind is hypnotized. You know, I mean, if you look at how hypnosis works, if you look at right. like uh, how hypnosis is uh, diffused, how hypnosis is like disseminated from the media itself, you know, the, 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 the dumb boxes, the TVs, you might call that the greatest mind control weapon ever devised. But I mean, if you look at, you know, the science shows that if you look at a TV for about 90 seconds, you start to drop into your brain waves start to slow down. You start to drop into an alpha wave state. And if you look at how the media is constructed, especially like the cable news, you know, which is interesting because they're all like overtly biased and nobody cares anymore, which is interesting. But beyond that, like the 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 way that they produce the way that they produce the shows, I mean, it's very hypnotic. Uh, I think it was sure. Samsung that actually came out with a, a thing a few years back where they were they were they had developed a way to put on a screen where you could you could go to this particular website uh, on one of their apps or whatever, and you could go to a screen and you would watch this thing and it would erase your memory of the show. I know that sounds far out, wow. <laughs> right? But but like the 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 combination of the flicker rate of TV, the combination of the moving images and right. symbols, there's a lot right. of circular, there's a lot of circular patterns. Mm -hmm. They have the, the scrolling text. There's multiple ideas on, on, uh, you know, on the same thing while somebody else mm -hmm. is talking about something mm -hmm. different. So all of this is really like specifically designed to break through what's called the critical factor of the mind. So you can look mm -hmm. at that as like the barrier between the conscious and the subconscious mind. And so hypnotists know this really well. Like you can't get somebody into hypnosis if they're, resistant to that. So the TV and the media, they use emotionally charged uh, images, emotionally charged stories, emotionally charged speech. And so when you attack the critical factor with emotion, you can break through it and you get right down into the subconscious mind. So you literally have a device that puts people into a, hypnos a hypnotic brainwave state. They attack the critical factor with the uh, the emotional content, whether it's sexually charged content, mm -hmm. violence, um, and just fear-based content. I mean, that's the big one right now. Right. And once they do that, it's like having a direct line into your your own internal programming, you know, so a hypnotist would call these pillars of belief, right? So you can go in and plant sure. what's called pillars of belief. And so to ferret that out, to root that stuff out, it takes a significant amount of work. Like somebody has to really make a conscious effort to control the input into their subconscious mind while at the same time reprogramming their subconscious mind. And this is a, a point of fascination for me because it has everything to do with self-sabotage. I mean, the subconscious mind is the star of the self-sabotage show. I mean, it is where your your patterns, the patterns that drive you back to the fridge at midnight, the patterns that uh, send you to the bar at night, the patterns that, you know, have you look up uh, look up a piece of exercise gear, spend two thousand dollars, and let it sit in your garage. Yeah, for the yeah, it's a clothes hanger. Yeah. Right. yeah, exactly. So these are these are patterns like these are our default behaviors. And so we know that the human mind has a system for running default behaviors. It's called the fight or flight mode, right? So when you, when, when that particular part of your physiology is activated, you revert to these simpler programs. So you, you could say yeah. that it goes even further deeper into the hind mind, the reptilian sure. brain. So these are survival mechanisms to where all you can, all you can fathom, all you can concentrate, all you're concerned with is the present moment is the the need for in, the need for security from the moment and since the mind doesn't know the difference if it's uh, on tv if it's happening in real life or even if you're using your you know your power of visu visualization in your mind the mind thinks it's all the same it communicates in sim symbols and sure. images and so uh, yeah there's a very powerful there's a very powerful trance that is set over people and and that's like there's still businesses that are asking you to require them which i think at this point would be discrimination yeah, of course. Um, you know, if it's not a mandate, if it's not a law, wouldn't it be discrimination if they asked me to wait outside, you know, because I'm not wearing a diaper on my face? You know, right. I would think so. But but either either way, what it, what I see when I what I think of when I see, you know, I, I mentioned before the show that I saw a young lady at a, a cafe the other day and she had a mask on and she would get a bite of food with her fork, lift her mask up, put the food in her mouth, close her mask and then chew with her mask on. And all I see, man, is fear. I just see fear. I yeah. see the really, really tangible, just really, really powerful impact of fear on people. And, you know, you know, this as well, like fear affects people who don't have mastery or control over themselves. Fear affects people that don't understand their own power. Fear affects people right. who are disconnected from source. Fear affects sure. people that are um, lost in their own right and don't have a real powerful sense of who they are. So when a person is in that state, when a person hasn't been trained to develop themselves, because of course schools and whatnot don't do that, uh, yeah, then they're right for the picking. So maybe you're maybe you're right. Maybe these are the, uh, what do you call them, the captured? You know, but they're, they're, they're certain... essentially so, so you said it, they're, they're cut off from source. So essentially they're mm -hmm. captured. But dude, by the way, that was profound. And I'm really <laughs> grateful to have you on here. I mean, your knowledge of, you know, you're talking about the autonomic nervous system, but basically mm -hmm. those people are literally in a limbic circle. It's a circle jerk. 
It's a limit fear, circle fight, jerk. Fight, yep. Fear, fight or fight, fear, fight or flight. And then they right. have no control over their physiological response because they have so many inflammasomes firing through their body that they're now emotionally based eating. So they, their lives fall apart. I mean, for the most part, they have no control, as you said, none. Yeah, but it's a, it's also, it's a multi-pronged attack. Okay. So right. anytime that your body is poisoned, right? Anytime, right. anytime your body is subjected to poison, right? It weakens your body. So we're talking about like, I get into this like real deeply with my clients and, and sure. you know, like the main thing the subconscious wants for you is to be safe among the tribe. Okay. Exactly. It wants you to feel a sense of security among a mass right. of people who it perceives to have power over whatever else. Right. So this is, you know, these are ancient programs written into our right. motherboards or whatever you want to say. And so the, the, the subconscious mind is always seeking safety by looking out, scanning the environment. It scans the environment at a ferocious rate. I mean, the subconscious can pick up 11 million or so bits of information a second. That's what it's been measured Maybe. to read. Well, as the conscious mind is somewhere in the neighborhood of 140. So that's a significant yeah. difference. And so what it looks for is it looks for what most people are doing, it looks for what most people are saying what most people are wearing, what most people are thinking. And then it tabulates those, everything that it sees. And the more it sees of something, the more it ranks it higher up on its chart of behaviors and ideas Pick and beliefs right. for right. you to engage in. Yeah. Right. And it sends it right up to the top and says, okay, these are the safe behaviors for the day. These are the safe ideas for the day. This is what's going to keep you safe among the tribe. And so, yeah, so you're dealing with a situation where um, weakness makes you clingy to the tribe. Right. Uh, um, being poisoned, being physically weakened, being financially weakened, being spiritually weakened, all of these things increase your natural inherent human uh, need for dependency uh, on that tribe. Right. So if you can imagine a pack of wolves, one, wolves, one of them gets cut or breaks a leg, they're going to the middle of the tribe. They're they're You know, if they if they leave the tribe, they're dead. So this is yeah. ancestral yeah. genetic programming. Right. These are trauma. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and so you have a situation where not only is it like the mind control, the literal, like, you know, um, deliberate intentional mind control coming from mass media, coming from government announcements, coming from Hollywood is a huge one. Um, oh. you know, the entertainment industry, a huge one, like the music. You industry mean Will really Smith is, didn't actually hit that idiot? I don't know, man. I don't, he probably, I know he, maybe, you know, I don't know. I really don't know. You know, <laughs> Dude, I kind of, I, I kind of, to be honest with you, I kind of look at that and I'm like, I'm it's, I'm glad to see Will Smith not be so fucking perfect for a day. Dude, it was so <laughs> so, Anyway, keep so, going. I don't want to stop you. Um, but but yeah, so there's there's the the deliberate mind control. Right? These are the things that the advertising industry has known since the days of Edward Bernays, exactly. you know, since the Tavistock Institute, uh, Maurice Strong, and these and these these uh, these old school thinkers. Right? You know, they they were the first ones to really blend psychology, the psychology of Sigmund Freud. Uh, you know, like, in fact, Edward Bernays was Sigmund Freud's nephew, which is interesting. Right. <laughs> but Bernays basically bridged the gap between uh, Sigmund Freud's ideas and using group psychology to actually manipulate a group of people. Mass persuasion. So you have all that going on. But then, Jay, like the other thing is like the poisons in the food, the Everything. poisons in the environment, the poisons in the water, but also like the, the caffeine. Like there's coffee shops on every corner. Yeah. Think about the people there's, that literally drink three caffeine, three coffees before 8 a.m., dude. Right. And that's literally like throwing a, it's, it's, you know, you talk about like the brain operates differently in different modes. When it's in fight or flight mode, you can't access your creativity. You can't Nothing. access your love. You can't access totally your wrong. long term decisions. You're, so self sabotage, a lot of that is about accessing your, the best part of your brain so that you can actually, everybody's million dollar idea is already sitting up there in the prefrontal cortex. Exactly it's sitting right. up there in the front of their mind, but they're, uh, when you dump coffee in the morning into your system, you're basically saying, hey, you know, we're going to throw a whole bunch of stress. You're going to go into fight or flight for at least the next 24 hours to three it's weeks. Insane. And so you can check out of your creative long term thinking, you know, until until that time and then wake up the next day and do it all over again. So you have to look at like how the, what the impact is of all of the poisons on our system at the same time, because like we're poisoned when we're weakened, we need the tribe more. So it, it's it's more difficult for us to fathom independence. It's more difficult for us to take the risks in our own lives to like individuate and be ourselves when we're in a weakened state. And so you just have to really, really, I mean, you really have to decide what you want out of life. And, and I mean, make a choice, take the risk to like do yourself, you know, like be yourself because really it all, it is, all of this is about uh, tribal clinginess is what I see. And so right now the predominant tribe is a fearful, uh, dysfunctional, unhealthy, overweight, uh, dependent on the medical system. You know, they reject their own natural system of immunity. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, they're financially weakened, broke in debt. Um, you know, they're just living that way. And so those people need the safety of the herd. But people like you and I, we don't need that. We just right. don't need that. We've developed our own strength. We've developed our own uh, sense of uh, individuality. And so, uh, you know, that's that's a scary place for the subconscious mind. But if the subconscious mind seeks safety, it doesn't necessarily. Well, you could say like this. Uh, the subconscious mind is a safety seeking mechanism. It's not necessarily a happiness seeking mechanism. So, right. Right. Uh, so we have to use that to our advantage. Those of us who are like truly awake and those of us who truly aspire to live uh, out great lives, even amongst all this turmoil and chaos, you know, may we live in interesting times, Jay. And yeah. And, 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 and by the way, man, I, I love listening to you, man. I, you're amazing. Uh, but you said a lot of things. I want to unpack a couple of things. Uh, you know, the reality is, is like when you say like, you know, it's what separates us. Like, do you believe that there is an innate as you called it, motherboard aspect of why people like you and I are not like that. Because yes, we have training, we do our inner work, we meditate, we contemplate, we're introspective, we go into nature. But is there a part of us? I mean, this is getting kind of weird, right? Because like, I know you've had these conversations, but like people talk about how like some people are truly just NPCs as Dolores Cannon called them. They're back. Dolores Cannon, the backfill people. Yeah, I'm very the backfill people. That, yeah. And then some of us are truly like empowered sovereign souls connected truly divinely to that higher self aspect of ourself, you know, the higher awareness aspect, the super consciousness, whatever. Yeah. It's, it's weird, bro. Cause you know, here we are now, you know, if you, you know, and obviously you and I are not Abrahamic adherents, but like, if you, if you brought up the Abrahamic stuff and maybe a lot of that's predictive mind control from the Jesuits that run the show anyway, but the truth is, is it seems like we are in a phase of like the tribulation where it's like now everything is being revealed are you conscious enough to understand and actually see what is being revealed? Or are you, as you said, locked in the autonomic nervous system of, you know, survival programming, guilt matrix, whatever you yeah. want to call it, where yeah, you see nothing, one. because let's face it, bro. Like most people, not like us, you can't even have a conversation with them about this. They are, this is a, they are oblivious to this. Well, more people are open to the conversation these days. But to answer Thank answer God. your question, um, I know that I know this to be true because I used to live in that state of consciousness and that sure. and what I what I've called contemporary consciousness. I think you know? we all so, were, right? Yeah, exactly, right. right? Yeah. So I mean, it's very much, especially those of us who, who grew up in the '80s and '90s. I mean, I was born in 1976. <laughs> so I mean, like those were. I mean, that 71. really was peak prosperity, golden years. I mean, really, right. like like it was right. really really easy to be entertained. Michael J. Fox, bro. Yeah, just <laughs> it's just carefree, what? right? You know, twenty-one gigawatts. <laughs> oh my god, I love sending my kids back down memory lane and getting on uh, YouTube and looking up old TV commercials. You know, the Lucky Charms guy and the yeah, uh, man. yeah. The uh, honey bee from uh, Honey Nut Cheerios and all that yeah. ridiculous. The Tricks Rabbit. The poor Tricks Rabbit can Tricks never rabbit. get can never get what he needs. Man. <laughs> poor guy's always deprived. But anyways. But those were those were good old days, and so it was, yeah, man. You know, it was uh, it was easy to really uh, be content in contemporary consciousness. But like so many people I know, and this is why I call my podcast "Battered Souls." Like uh, that that environment beat us beat us down, it beat us around. We became alcoholics, we became drug addicts. I became a meth addict for like five years. I mean, wow. And you know, then we needed help, so we went to the doctor. The doctor put us on this pill and that pill, and sent us to this yeah, specialist dude. and that specialist. And so, and the next thing you know, we've got just substances and toxins and chemicals coming at us from every direction. And we keep being told that this is all necessary to fix us and make us happy. And so it leads to rock bottom. It leads to the dark night of the soul that leads to a collapse in your, uh, your, your, your being. Right. And so people handle that in different ways. And so in my case, you know, that's part of my story. I've told that many times in my podcast and on my website, but you know, in my case, it was like I was presented. The universe did me a huge favor. They sent me to a psychiatrist who was who was literally a mass murderer. He had all this Vietnam memorabilia on his wall. And I asked him, I looked him dead in the eyes and I said, yeah, you were in Vietnam. What did you do? He was like, oh, I was a fighter bomber pilot. I was I like, killed I, people. straight in the eyes. I was like, how many people have you killed? He goes, thousands, thousands. Jesus literally. Christ. Swear to God. Told me he makes four hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. He's got houses and all that. Durango, Chiapas, Mexico. He's got a Cessna, Mercedes Benz. So you understand the system rewards demonic agent, sorcery agent smith you know so 
Right. But so, but in my case, like in my case, I feel very blessed that it was the absurdity of this one hour uh, conversation that I had with a psychiatrist in 2004 with was psych- so blatant. Psychotic, blatant. psychotic yeah. psychiatrist. Let's psychotic, say literal mass murder. Like, have, have you ever been in the presence of somebody who's murdered, murdered thousands of people? I think most like of them are Kurtz? psychiatrists, bro, by the way. So, yeah, I mean. But the the uh, the universe the universe made it so obvious and so blatant to me that the system was like just another big trap. And so he, I mean, this guy literally wanted to put me on seven medications a day. He had free of samples course. of all of them, and I left his left his office. Value and thought, add, oh, value add, value add, value add. Yeah, yeah. This one for that's uh, this one for the side effects bill. of that. This one for the yeah. This one for this. This <laughs> one to go to bed. This one to get you up. Literally, it was this whole this fucking insanity. So, wow. but. Luckily for me, you know, I just did a, I just did an interview on my podcast the other day with a woman named Ali Zek. Like she spent 30 something years, you know, dealing with psychiatric abuse. Luckily for me, I got my fill in one visit. And so, uh, yeah, that 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 was enough to send me on the path of self mastery. And so, yeah, I know I know what it's like to be in contemporary consciousness. If I wouldn't have been presented with such a ridiculous situation by the psychiatrist, who knows? I mean, the guy literally told me I'd have to take these pills for the rest of my life. Of course, I was. And they tell everybody that. Chemical imbalance, chemical imbalance, which doesn't mean anything. Nothing. There's no such thing. You're 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 whirring sparks and vibrating molecules of energy, dude. Right. So I have a book uh, just to shift on that for a second. Yeah. Yeah. It's, hey guys, what's going on? If you're looking to level up your life from a mind, body, and spiritual perspective, join the fully optimized health private membership group today. There is no better place online to discuss hormones, peptides fitness, fat loss, supplements, and even raising your consciousness with an elite tribe of men and women. You also get to speak to me directly every single week in the Ask Me Anything. Join today. Go to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up and I'll see and talk to you soon. If you've Mm. never read this book, not that you need to know any of this, but this book right here, Breaking the Spell of the Ivory Tower by Jerry Marzinski and Sherry Swinney, and I've interviewed them. They're not even allowed to talk, by the way. Like if you interview these people on YouTube and you do it live, it'll, be, it'll the conversation will be blocked. But they posit, yeah. dude, they straight up posit that psychiatry is controlled by demonic entities, that the majority of people in the highest levels of psychiatry are under the influence of whatever these energy vampire beings are. And so it brings me to ask you, because you're the guy to ask, who is the enemy? Mm. The enemy is you. It's me, right? I mean, the enemy is yourself because, yeah. you know, with, with some of the spiritual traditions I'm, I'm, I'm part of, especially the Bwiti tradition of Africa, which uses the, sure. the plant medicine and boga, right? It's, it's a, they use a boga to understand life, to understand what right. the value of life is, what the importance of life is. So it's an oral tradition that's been around for perhaps thousands of years. Nothing's written down. So they transmit this energy from right. ceremony to ceremony. Thank God we still have it. Yeah, we still have it. It's thriving right now, you know. So I have a lot of good friends that are doing that amazing work. Um, and so, in in this tradition, this is something that has been uh, I've spent a lot of time in, and a lot of help like facilitating and working with. And the, the, it's very very empowering because it it brings it takes everything out of your control and just shuts it off. It doesn't matter, yeah. right? What is within your sense of perception, right? You have your five senses plus your sixth sense, your intuition, right? If you if you can't see it, touch it, taste it, feel it, hear it. Uh, or intuit it, then it doesn't, re- it doesn't deserve your attention. So I've thought about that question a lot. Like who's, who's involved in this? You know, I was involved in uh, politics. I was involved in uh, like the deep study of, of history, you know, going back to things like world war one, who funded sure. world war one, who funded world war two, what were the roles of some of the American steel companies and motor companies and stuff in world war two and perpetuating all of these situations that caused tremendous damage and harm and death and destruction and murder in our world. And what you find it invariably, if you look at the, the untold, histories of all these events there's always a lot of money involved there's always uh, international there's always international cooperation at that level so there's never the really yeah. Yeah, yeah the robber barons and so i got really really involved and interested in that and did politics and stuff for a while in the early 2000s and, and went down that road and was uh, you know really curious about some of the other and, and i'm i'm not going to get too deep because i've been sure. censored off youtube and i've been on podcasts and they get censored off youtube and anyways but the point being is that you and me is that at some point at some point, the uh, you know energy flows where attention goes, and you need energy, Jay. I need energy. We need energy for our lives right now. We need more energy than ever. We have to produce. We have to feed our families in an inflationary economy. You know, like we have to, like we have to, we have to survive here. So we need energy. So I look, to, I look at things a little differently now than I have 
uh, for the last 20 or so years. And that is, uh, it can be whatever you want it to be. Um, I definitely know that there are uh, very vocal, open, uh, international, global organizations like the World Economic Forum who have uh, certain designs and plans Clark, and they're executing Clark. those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, so they're executing they're executing these plans mr schwab with his uh, you know, fancy <laughs> fancy beach gear i don't know if you've ever seen that photo of him yeah. in the sort of like perverse wedding gear <laughs> yes little, I like, have. Taking a cup. anyways yeah so there's definitely these people operating in the world are they the top of the system no man i mean you, you know and i've spent i've spent a lot of time in the jungle i've spent a lot of time going deep with with uh iboga and there's a there's a truth that isn't yeah available to your perception and these narratives Absolutely. and these stories. And so Absolutely. right now, well, so I feel I have, like, well, let, me, well, let me ask you this just, though. Yeah, sure, I, don't sure. want, I don't want to stop you. You, you know, you said you had a meth addiction. So a lot of people who mm -hmm. have come back, you know, and maybe not at the level you have, but you know, to speak at the level that you do, they talk about entities. They talk about like, right, right. you know, being around, you know, I, let's just call them parasitic organisms. Yep, yep, yep. Out of the line of sight of, like you said, third dimensional perception, you know, and obviously we are locked in a prison prism of perception, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, did you ever encounter those, it, you know, when you were under that influence in contemporary consciousness? Or, I mean, is it something you can relate to to speak about now? I didn't understand at the time. I didn't have the frame of reference to understand right. what I was going through. I didn't have right. the, I didn't have the awareness of a lot of this concepts, the esoteric spiritual stuff at sure. the time. I didn't start that line of study until after I hit rock bottom and started on my path to self mastery and was like fed with all of this interesting, enlightening, inspiring new information. You know, all this yeah. stuff right before the net really picked up on everything. Sure, the sure, sure, sure. Yeah. So I didn't really have a frame of reference. Um, but I have seen, I'll be honest with you, I've seen, the interdimensional i've seen levels of interdimensional beings spirits sure. uh, whatever in some of my journeys with plant medicines especially yeah, yeah which is the south american but so i know that i know that that is a reality and so if you look at like the artwork of pablo amaringo for example i'm not sure if you're familiar with him but he, uh, he's a visionary it. artist you know he's from uh, peru and he's spent uh, you know most of his life working as a you know the, like the captain or the, the head honcho of a, of a dock port and in his 50s he finally left that career and ended up discovering for himself ayahuasca and then spent a lot of time in the jungle by himself. And so when he came back, he was able to, to uh, visually paint. So he wasn't ever a painter before that, but he gave him the gift of this, 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 this yeah. insight, See. this sight. Yeah, right. yeah. And so these paintings are all, uh, they're all basically like, um, uh, uh, details of the cosmology of the, of the spirituality involved with ayahuasca. So there's the people on the ground in the ceremony, there's their ancestor spirits who are around them. There's the, um, the uh, uh, worldly spirits in the forest around him with the eyes and the, you know, the different things happen in the forest. There's the rainbow, which is the, you know, the boa, the, the rainbow bow above that separating, you know, it's just like the veil separating it. And then above that you'll have, of course, you'll, you'll see like the water too with water entities, but above that you'll have towers and towers of these amazing, uh, you know, temples, these just fascinating, endless, endlessly rising temples. You'll see UFOs and all this kind of stuff. So he was able to draw that because that's what, that's what you can experience when you go to that yeah. space. So the fact that yeah. so many people have been there and can corroborate, it tells me that, and I've, you know, I've been there as myself as well. So there is that, right. Yeah. But dude, I think right now, and this is with all the things I've done, that's why I'm really like, uh, like the self-sabotage work I think is, is super important right now because I think more than ever, it's, in, it's time to be grounded, like really, really grounded mm -hmm. in understanding yourself, where your energy goes, where your power goes, where it needs to go. So whether it's, mm -hmm. Reptilian entities, Pleiadians, Dogons, whatever it is, whatever you it is. You have to say Pleiadian on my show, bro. Oh, yeah. I'm the cornucopia of, of the okay, uh, like, 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 Arcturian. Arcturians, Pleiadians. Uh, you know, I have a friend who is uh, having a currently having an experience, a, a regular contact with a, an alien f being that she's able to channel. So, I mean, I know that this stuff is real, but. Yeah, it is for the for the people out there man like get yourself grounded pull all that back exactly. in man cut all that stuff off man focus on being your best right now because we need you at your best and, and what, what do i mean by that we need you to have your power we need you to be able to make decisions for yourself right, right. and to be confident and guilt-free in those decisions that you make for yourself aside from the tribe you need to be financially stable as as as, you, as much as you can you need to be physically strong and able and you need to be uh, spiritually connected so yeah, you need you need to have your power in these times, and anything that 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 sends your power off looking for answers and things way beyond the way beyond your realm of being just doesn't really help. 
right now. It just doesn't really help right now. So those are curio- those are topics of curiosity and fascination, but uh, bring it back in. Yeah, man. I mean, bro, you're so you're so amazing, man. Like, uh, I mean, <laughs> back at you. It takes one to know. No, one. <laughs> I mean, honestly, bro. Like, I mean, yeah. I mean, well, it's, that's true, right? Because you know, both of us are in a resonant energy field. So we are going to bring that out of one another. It is, you know, a projection, you know, it's, you know, I even said it yesterday with the uh, the podcast with Udo. He, by the way, he corrected me. He's like, Jay, I'm Udo. I've always been calling him Udo. It was, he's so amazing. But, uh, you know, we were talking about that, that you, and you said it, and let's, let's just focus on that before we end the show. But, uh, you, you know, uh, everything is energy. I mean, that's all we really are. Right. I mean, I always say like, these physical avatar, meat suit, flesh puppet, you know, whatever these are, these bodies, these, you know, there's all these shows now, I guess, on television, I guess. I forget the name of the show on on uh, Netflix that, you know, is it Altered Carbon? Is that what the show is called? Or like, we're uh, flesh. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't watch TV either, but like, you know, people talk to me about it. But like, we're, you know, th- these are just literally avatars for us to move you right. know, in the third dimension to evolve. You know, for me the purpose of life is, you know, more, it's obviously more evolved, but to simplify it, it's to evolve and grow the soul, mm-hmm. right? It's like literally while we're here, that is the purpose because if there is, you know, and obviously you and I believe this, but if there is a source consciousness, a field mm-hmm. of energy and and frequency and everything and nothing, then it makes or stands to reason that everything that's conscious and sentient alive or living being is learning. And so right. if we're all, again, interconnected through that, like, you know, aspect of like what I call a holographic fractal of that oversold and every experience is a learning opportunity, right? Like, I mean, we want to label things here in this third dimension of duality as good or bad, light or dark, but in truth, it's an experience that everyone or every living thing can learn and grow from based on perceptual awareness. And so like that to me is why we're really here. That is why conscious life and beings are here. And, and, and in my experience, Dylan, we are nothing more than consciousness. Mm-hmm. That's really all we are. Yeah. And in my experience, um, let's just say I've gone pretty far up <laughs> with, with some of the things I've uh, been, uh, been privileged to experience, have experienced. And yeah, I've been to a point where you can see a bigger picture, you know, mm-hmm. and Me it's, too. you know, I've been having a conversation with one of my clients about this recently, but uh, she's really curious about what is God, you know, who is God? How do we, what name do we put on God? And she's looking up philosophy and trying to define God and, and various philosophies and this and that. And, and, you know, and it's, it's not something that you can describe with language. Right. And it's not something that I don't think it's something that everybody gets to experience. And so right. for those who have experienced it, you know, it, it leaves a mark, it changes you forever. Totally. And so, totally. And so, yeah, in that regard, like, I just like, that's the confidence that, that a person who has, uh, let me just say it like this, it gives you confidence to go that far and recognize that there's something bigger. There's something mm-hmm. beyond this meat flesh sack, you know, this bag of stardust that we're all walking around in. So it's hard to control people. It's hard to control people with fear once they've experienced that, once they've that's tasted exactly that, right. once they've touched that. And so, you know, like again, again, my podcast battered souls, I like, I like talking with people uh, who've been to the edge and back who've stood right. at the edge of the cliff and almost fallen or jumped off and came back. And then they've been able to heal themselves and transmute that energy into positive energy in their life to help other people. Because uh, those are the people who aren't afraid anymore. You right. know, push someone to the edge. They're not afraid anymore. You show them what's right. behind the veil. They're not afraid in the, anymore. And so it's, you know, it's easy to get caught up with what's going on in the world, what's going on with the media this week, whether it's Will Smith, or Ukraine or COVID or whatever, but all of those things are specifically put in place to capture your attention, right? To disconnect yeah. you from source, to keep you from understanding your true power, to keep you from understanding the fact that you don't need a leader. You don't need an authority. You don't need a governor. You don't need any of these people in your lives making decisions for you. That's, yeah, that's, that's. Well, I mean, think of, think of, think of religion. I mean, think of all of the people to this day still that are going to mass on Sundays, bro. Yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a community element to that. I have a few friends that were partying with me back in the day that have have gotten into Christianity. And, and it's interesting to me to see these people who had had lived that lifestyle, you know, like been so gotten into that hardcore go, go grind it out at the drug scene uh, lifestyle and then end up, end up in the church. And because they found their savior, that's their external God, the church. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, there's there's perhaps more to it for for some people. You know, I see them finding no, a sense is. of community, a sense of, a sense yeah. of place and belonging. Right. And you know, there's I several people that. I'm thinking of in particular don't even really subscribe or ascribe to the to the philosophy to the original as much. They're mostly interested in being around wholesome people who aren't you know aren't um, who aren't um, uh, like who aren't wrecking their lives, right? Who right, right, just right, 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 destroying right. themselves. But yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, religion is religion to me seems like a the whole point of religion is to have should be to have a spiritual experience, but exactly. from what I've it's, seen from it's religion, opposite, it's basically yeah. you're to worship somebody else's spiritual it's a control experience. lever. Yeah, right. it's a control lever. Yeah, yeah, it's but, but it's it's a control lever, but also it's a it's a bypass because Jay, I mean, right. I mean, if you're if you're focused on someone else's spiritual experience, like if you're focused on on the guy on the cross all the time and what he went through, you don't have the attention to strive and seek and discover that for right. yourself, you yeah. know. You know, but you're right. There's there's so much to this. I mean, you know, can you imagine? I mean, I, I work with this this uh, with self sabotage a lot. So much of self sabotage has to do with your environment, what you see, what you hear, and especially the thoughts that you hear going on and on and on in your head. These shape these shape your programs in, in, inside your subconscious mind. So, what does it do to a person who sees you know a, 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 a guy hanging by nails to two pieces right. of lumber everywhere he goes? You know, I've, I've been blood. to Italy. I've been to Rome. I've been to Rome. It's the bloodiest. <laughs> It's the bloodiest place I mean, on earth. I mean, it's, the whole thing, dude, is like when you really start like removing yourself from it. And as you said, and, and let me go back to set you up even better what you're saying, because yesterday, and, and 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 we both know this, but, you know, yesterday Udu said, like, I talk about the Buddha sack, which is the amniotic sack, right? When you're there for nine months and all you are is free flowing and nobody is giving you energy or thoughts or ideas or brainwash or constructs or indoctrination. And then you come out. The doctor slaps you on the ass, right? So the truth yeah. is, is that in a physical body, the first four to six years of our life, everything is given to us. We have no power. Right. So it's like you and I, you know, when we found ourselves, say 30 years, 40 years, 35 years later. And by the way, I want to ask you this. I, it just triggered me so I don't forget. But like mm -hmm. for guys like us, we've you know been at the brink. We've had those dark nights of soul. I've attempted suicide. You know, I've been mm -hmm. rock bottom. You've been there. I mean- is it necessary? I mean, a lot of people think it is, but is it, a, is it necessary to hit rock bottom to get to a consciousness that we are, that we are at, at now? I mean, not that we're better than anybody else, but is that necessary in that, in that capacity? Do you think? Two comments on that. One is that the darker it gets in your life, the more capacity you have to, to like expand into light. Right. So for some mm -hmm. people like myself, the darker things got, the darker I've gone. I, I feel like that's, you know, flexed my ability to experience the highs that I have. So without going that deep into the darkness, I might still be living a very shallow existence. Um, the other thing I would say is that uh, 20 years ago when I went through it, yeah, it was probably necessary because I was all alone in it. But today, like there's so many people out there that are, that can, Social media, there are so many people out there that work with people on this that are telling their stories. So it's like for the first time ever, you you realize that, oh, okay, there are other people that have been through right. this. Rock bottom maybe yeah. isn't as cool. Maybe it's not necessary. Maybe it's not a maybe it's overrated. And so it's easier, I think, now to find perspective and help than it ever was. That's a good, that's a good answer. Yeah. I mean, I think about like what happened to me without getting into the story. I really honestly felt like I had a, 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 an interdimensional or divine, you know, break in and tap me on the shoulder and said, pull the steering wheel. You know what I mean? Like, so it's like, and then I sat there literally vibrating consciously, like, what did I just do? But I knew at that moment that my mission was like, okay, I'm turning this around. Yep. And it was just like this overbearing, like, you know, download, pure connection. That's a better way to say it of like, okay, you just got a second chance. You just were granted a reprieve. It's time to like right. really- right go a different direction. So yeah, probably, man. I mean, but you're right. I mean, there's so much now influence from social media, digital technology, where people have similar stories, right? Like we, right, like right. you said, we're all kind of spinning the same yarn in different facets and aspects. And it's like, if you are capable of listening, then you're right. Maybe you don't have to hit rock. <laughs> but I'm a firm believer in, in the, the real thing, right? Experiencing things for yourself. <laughs> you know, learning through your own experience rather than other people's. And so, right. uh, yeah, I mean, right. I honestly, Jay, that's an interesting question. I honestly don't think it would be possible to have the awareness and understanding and the appreciation for my own life and the sacred world that we live in. If I hadn't been to the edge and back. Hey guys and gals, what's going on? If you're looking to use peptides, make sure you go to my number one source, limitless life nootropics. 
For healing with BPC-157 and TB-500 or fat loss with ipamorelin, CGC-1295 and AOD-9604 to immunity with TA-1, thymus and alpha-1, Limitless Labs, a huge selection. Go to LimitlessLifeNootropics.com and use my code J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I send you guys tremendous love and light. It's probably, it's probably necessary. You know, my, my wife has a saying like, and I'm sure you've heard it. It's cliche. When she said it to me, I had never heard it though. Um, but it's people don't give a shit how much, you know, until they know how much you care. Mm. Right. Yeah. So if you really think about that, that aspect of that statement, you know, really will prove what you just said that you almost have to experience it, you know, no yeah. amount of talking or demonstration. And then my, my, my wife's dad, who is a 37 year old recovering addict who beat her, my wife's mom and their kids and was a horrible person. He's a completely recovered, amazing guy. I literally look at him as a mentor. He says, until people become sick and tired of being sick and tired. <laughs> AA guy. talk, yeah. <laughs> it's right, he's a total Alcoholics AA. Anonymous talk, it's good stuff. Right, yeah. he's a total AA guy. But like he yep. says that, you know, in a way that's like really powerful when he speaks to people about it. And it's, right. it's so true. And it's like, so that again, gives more credence to the idea that you really do have to get to a place of like rock bottom. Yeah. By the way, his rock bottom was that, he had a hundred dollars in his pocket to go buy Christmas kit gifts for his kids. And he mm -hmm. went and blew it all on drugs and money. And when he woke up in the pool of blood in the morning, he reached in his pocket and it was like, Holy fuck. What did I do? I yeah. can't even buy kids gifts. So but that's you, what you know, there's an interesting thought I have around this, something I've never, uh, never contemplated before, but, um, we always think of spiritual experience as some this enlightening thing. You're visited by a being of white lights. You're taken off to an enchanted land of energy, a golden light. Yeah, right? yeah. But like looking back, just uh, listening to what you said, I mean, that really was a spiritual experience, that reckoning with myself, that yes. moment in rock bottom where it was like you realized that none of your devices, none of your tools, your tricks, your bullshit, none of that worked <laughs> anymore. You were left exposed, bare, raw, right? So in my case, it was like, you know, like uh, pills, powders, drugs, weed, alcohol, porn, you know, just like locked in my own space, isolated, just like go, 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 go. And, it, and that wasn't working. We'll add some antidepressants in it too. We'll get some more Xanax. We'll get some more Valium going here, right? To just balance it all out. And that, that really is a, a, looking back, it was a spiritual experience. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely amazing, bro. Um, talk a little bit about a boga. Because I think the audience would love to hear about that. I mean, I you know I've had so many people I've talked about with the toad and uh, and ayahuasca and you know other things, but mm -hmm. I haven't really had anybody talk about a boga. Because can you talk a little bit about it? Love to talk about a boga. Um, it's interesting because a lot of people know about ayahuasca, Jay. Yeah, um, I have a, I have it's come many, on, many, bro. I have a reality television yeah. show about it. Well, if you're interested in non-commoditized traditional proper medicine, contact me because uh, you know the people that I, the people, the tradition that I'm part of, the Sequoia and, and the upper God Amazon are are uh, remarkable. But a lot of people, a lot of people have experienced ayahuasca, and so let me just make a comparison here for some. Ayahuasca is a vine; the vine reaches up into the sky, right? So the experience of ayahuasca is it's almost like the doctrine of signatures is in place. So the experience of ayahuasca is one of reaching higher and higher into the cosmos, one of reaching up and up and up until you reach the 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 realm of the celestial immortals, right? So you reach the most supreme, most purified beings that perhaps were here on earth at some point and were able to purify their souls enough to be uh, carried up to the heights, the highest temples. So in that, when you're journeying up and out and up and above, there's a sense of, uh, uh, there's a sense of uh, it's out of context. You don't belong there. You're in somebody else's world. And you probably experienced this with the toad medicine. I have never known oh, yeah. the toad medicine. It has not called me. Um, but there's a sense of this otherworldly, you're out of your realm. Um, you're, yeah, you're just expanded way above and beyond everything. Okay. On the other hand, Iboga is, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because uh, the tradition I'm part of, uh, the Bwiti tradition, you know, the, the, the grandmaster of our tradition is in Gabon, Africa. Gabon, Africa is right on the equator as well. So there's a rainforest in Western equatorial Afri Africa. The tradition I'm part of in South America is also right on the e equator in Ecuador. So these are intercontinental things. So on one half, you have the spirit that reaches you up higher and higher, and higher. The vine in 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 Africa, it's a root. So it's this little shrub called Tabernanth aboga. Has these crazy little flame-like fruits. Uh, but you harvest the actual medicine from digging out the roots, scraping off the outer layer of bark, and then it's the middle layer of bark on the root. So you're you're eating root bark. So you can eat that by itself. You don't have to mix it with anything. 
you can make teas and different things out of it. You can even do extracts where you extract uh, the uh, the psychoactive alkaloid is ibogaine. But I believe there's like 15 yeah, or so ibogaine. alkaloids in there in the, in the in the actual medicine itself. But uh, so it's it's a grounding experience. It's a rooted experience. So when you when you journey with iboga, like you go into a very grounded space, a very much uh, introspective space about your life and. Uh, there's a lot of information to be had there that you can't get with ayahuasca. There's a lot of sure. uh, concrete, uh, concrete, very, very serious, very, very useful guidance that you can get from the masculine spirit of a boga where that, that, that doesn't, it doesn't, ayahuasca doesn't necessarily work that way. So when you journey with a boga and I'll just describe like the ceremonies, uh, what we do, we will sit around a fire, right? Uh, we'll light the fire in a specific way. We'll begin a, a talk. We call it the fireside chat. We all talk, we talk about the philosophy of Bwiti, we talk about the challenges in our life, we talk about the things that brought us to the medicine, that called us to the medicine. Uh, then after an hour or so, we'll start to take a spoonful of the root bark, or we might take an alkaloid extract, you know, a pill, you can swallow it. Uh, the root bark is very, very acidic. It's very, um, um, it's got this, like, it's very, like this acrid, bitter taste, and, you know, it's ground up real fine, so it's like you're chewing on soda, so it's kind of hard to get down, but we keep talking, we keep talking. And then as we're in a fire circle, like it, it affects people in different ways. So they'll start to, uh, they'll start to be like, Whoa, I feel it. Once you feel it, you kind of start to lose your sense of, of balance. We take you to a mattress and lay you down where you listen yeah. to Bwiti music all night long until six o'clock in the morning at six o'clock in the morning, we take you, take you to your room. The music's turned off and you hang on your, in your hotel room in the dark by yourself until it wears off. The longest that I've journeyed for Jay is about 36 hours to give you a sense wow. of how, how, how far this can go. Damn. During the journey, so you lay down in, on a mattress in this medicine, you're listening to this music. If you've never heard it, I'll have to send some to you. But it very really? much feels you have. I haven't. No, I, I would oh, love okay, to hear okay. it. To it's me. very fast paced. There's a couple of really interesting instruments, the Mungongo and the Buiti harp. But it's a uh, um, unlike anything you've ever heard before. So on the on the medicine, it has the effect of like unlocking uh, uh, controls, unlocking the the uh, uh, combination lock of your mind. So during the whole journey, yeah. you feel like there's this sense of like there's a, an unlocking going on. And so when you start the journey, uh, what happens is you'll be laying there with a, a blindfold on and the guide will come over and say, hey, you know, are you there yet? And be like, what are you talking about? And they'll be like, well, I'm going to tap on your third eye here and let me know when you can see my hand. So they'll try to take their, their blindfold off. No, leave the blindfold on. Let me know. Can you see my hand through uh, through your eyes with your third eye? And so sure as shit, man, like at some point uh, you'll be, they'll be tapping and you'll see their hand. Your eyes are fully closed. And so when that happens, a, a movie screen literally looks like a movie screen will open up inside your inner field of vision. And on that movie screen, you can basically go to any point in time, any events. Uh, you can go all the way back to the beginning of time. You can go all the way back to forward in time. You can replay your entire life in this, in this situation. And it's a really quite a phenomenal experience because your body basically goes into a childlike infant like state. It's just kind of hard to use. You can't really walk. If you got to go to the bathroom, you need help physically getting there. So your body just kind of turns itself off, but your mind, everything that's happening in your mind feels real. It feels like you're actually there. And so it's interesting being in that space because you're living all of these experiences. You're living, living, literally flying through the cosmos, uh, visiting your deceased ancestors and having conversations with them. Uh, the, the, the main value, the main place that we take people, uh, in the, in the beginning is to go visit their own soul, to visit themselves. So we'll say, Hey, go back to your house when they can see their house in their mind and feel like they're actually at their house. We'll have them into their house and find their, find themselves. A lot of times for people today, it's their self is a child still a 10 year old, yeah. five year old child. A lot of times their soul doesn't want to have contact or communication. It'll run away or it's angry or it won't communicate or it just puts off a real standoffish vibe. And so that's the, that's where we start, Jay. We start with patching up the connection with your soul. So you're face to face with yourself. It feels real as real as <laughs> real as anything you've ever experienced. And you're looking at yourself, but you know, intuitively that it's your soul, it's your higher self. And so if you've ever experienced trauma, drug abuse, I mean, that's one of the things that, uh, you know, our, um, our elder shaman talk about is that when a person goes through trauma, sexual trauma, physical trauma, uh, emotional trauma, drug abuse, alcoholism, or anything, especially in their early years, their soul growth stops, bam, right there. Right. And so you'll go back and you'll revisit yourself and you'll be like, oh, I'm 10 years old now. Okay. Well, why am I 10 years old? And because that's, that's where the trauma start. happened. Right. So we, we have an actual process, an actual conversation where you speak out loud to your soul and you get a chance to make peace with your soul. And it's, you know, part of it is like, hey, you know, Dylan, uh, look, uh, let's work together. I know that I've been on my own path for a while, but let's work together. I need you and you need me. 
So it very much is this process of reconnecting and reunifying with your soul and being able to uh, have that, that part of you as an ally going forward. Yeah. So then the rest of the journey, which can last, like I said, you know, 12 hours, 36 hours, like you're just in your mind, you're in these scenes, you're living through these scenes. So I've experienced, you know, living through childbirth. I've experienced the death of planet earth. I've experienced at the beginning of time. Right. And, and it's not something that I joke about or take seriously. Like I feel like no, I've yeah. been there and actually seen it. And so the information that you get, the takeaways and uh, really like the, the real value of it for first timers, it's, it feels like a detoxification of all of the matrix programming in our world, all of the bullshit that's been programmed into our minds, all of the belief systems, because everything is asking you to believe in it. Right. So the CNN wants you to believe in it. MSNBC wants you to believe in it. So what you realize in a boga is that like most of what's going on in your mind are a bunch of mixed mash of conflicting belief systems. And once you're able to cut through the chase and recognize that there is no value in belief, there's only value in knowing, there's only value in experience, there's only value in what you can actually um, um, touch with your five and six senses, uh, that your life is, is scattered. It's your energy is distributed, right? So all of these conflicting belief systems that people have like really derail them, really give them false ideas yeah. about who they are and what they need to be. And so you can detoxify from all of that. My first few journeys though, man, like being somebody who's looked at conspiracy theories, being, being somebody who's been down all the rabbit holes were very, very, very dark. So a lot of people complain. A lot of people don't, it doesn't resonate because they, they don't have the fortitude to look that intently at the darkness. You know, they tend to fall into the abyss. Right. Right. And so it really takes someone with a strong character to see all that and recognize it as a lesson, recognize it as something valuable that can turn your life around, something that can give you the ability to perceive higher levels of consciousness, the ability to perceive greater possibilities in, in your life. And I happen to be one of those people. So I actually relish the, the, the really, really startling, shocking journeys. I feel like it's a very, very uh, important psychic purge, you know, and this is you know, man, like like what's happening right now with Ukraine? It's really, really easy to get sucked into that story. It's really, really There's easy so to get much sucked disinformation into the... with real information. It's impossible to know. I mean, I think even on the ground, you might not know. But, but yeah, but in addition to that, though, but like the imagery involved, you know, oh. like we talked about before, the subconscious mind doesn't know right. the difference between what's real, what's on the TV screen, right. and what you can visualize with your own mind. You can have somebody close their eyes and imagine a lemon, and it'll activate their salivary glands. You know, right. like we like there is a connection, a mind body connection that happens. And so with all of these gro this, this grotesque imagery, with all of this concern for people and showing all this damage and destruction, like uh, um, I've learned to, I've learned to understand like um i've learned, learned to understand how to like not let it impact me in a certain way but most people don't have that protectorship they don't have that guardianship in, in, in play in their own life and so all of these images are being downloaded into the subject subconscious mind and so what it is it's a it's a programming of chaos it's the programming of terror it's the programming of destruction and so this plays out and this is why i really really uh, you know i feel like working with people on the level of self-sabotage really really complements the plant medicine experience because when the programs that we're downloaded with create terror and chaos in our subconscious mind, our subconscious mind basically works to repeat what it sees in the world. And so for people who you know, have to have a glass of red wine at night, for people who have to smoke a little bit of a spliff to relax, for people who need nicotine during the day or you need a cup of coffee or they need Xanax or whatever you know, to take the edge off, right? Um, you know, these are, these are uh, basically responses to the chaos and terror programming. Anytime a, a Anytime you, you're so used to it, you're so driven to keep yourself in chaos. Anytime you have a moment of peace, you find yourself having a good day. You, you had a winning week at work. You had a winning week with your relationships. Things are going your way. You find some peace. Your emotional body kicks in like that physical mm. sense of like there's a sense of dread or a sense of anxiety that hangs out in my diaphragm or there's something below my heart that's causing a million thoughts to loop and circle in my mind. And so. And so in, in that, like this, this chaos programming, all of that really, really right now, I think is driving people to, to just like medicate more and they don't understand why, like all of these programs uh, keep us, keep us locked into that uh, vibration of, of chaos. So when we see all this, when we see all these Hollywood super superhero movies, when we see all these, uh, you know, swashbuckling fight scenes and everything, it's just chaos, chaos, chaos. And so when we have a moment of peace, we can't stand it. You know, we have to introduce more chaos. We have to find a vibrational match for what we're used to, which is, you know, whatever it is, chaos. whatever, whatever, pick your poison, bro. Like, so, so yeah, I mean, I think that really like where the rubber meets the road is, is 
taking back control of, of your own behavior. You know, most people believe that they're making decisions for themselves and that they're behaving for themselves. And as a self-sabotage coach, it's a riot. It's a riot. It's so much fun to walk people through this understanding of, of um, how the subconscious mind actually works. And so what I use for that is I use videos of stage mentalists and stage mentalists can go on. I have several, many, many examples of this. They can go in and in a short 30 second, one minute, one and a half video, they can be talking and they can have images in the background that you don't see consciously. And then they can have 300 people on Zoom on, on America's Got Talent. They can have Howie Mandel all draw the same picture of his son with a smiley face. And they're like, how the hell did you do that? So he replays the intro video. This is from a guy named Max Major. You can look this up on YouTube. Max Major and Howie Mandel on America's Got Talent with Terry Crews. But and then he goes back and shows you, well, in that short video, I walked through the scene with confidence and behind me were all these sons and smiley faces and stuff. And then I told you to draw a picture and you thought that you were being original and creative, but really your subconscious mind was just doing what it does. So it feels right. like magic, but these are the very tangible, practical, uh, scientific understandings of how the subconscious mind works. So we're always downloading this stuff and we're always repeating what we see. And so it's a it's a really, really, uh, it's a great time to free yourself from that. It's a great time to take conscious control over your behavior. And so that's one thing I just love working with people on. I mean, bro, like, like I said, man, I'm a pretty glib dude. And I can just listen to you speak. I mean, on hours, I mean, I feel like I motivated you. I got you a little fired up because you were really <laughs> deep and profound in here. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, I have so many questions about Iboga. I mean, I want to ask, you know, I'm not going over 60 minutes because I know people, you know, they have no attention spans. But I mean, again, a <laughs> profound, <laughs> profound show. So many amazing deep truths. And you ask me, when's this going up? And I'm going to be like, oh, it's going up right away. There's cool. a lot of people That's that this is cutting over. Uh, but I got to ask you. So you said you saw or you can in these 36 hour trips, shamanic experiences, journeys, mm -hmm. uh, all the fabric of time. So my question is, do you believe, or do you know, maybe it's a combination of both that we really are as energy reincarnate. I mean, I hate using the word reincarnating, but are we, is that what's happening? I mean, are our energy forms like literally living as many experiences as possible? Again, if the construct of, you know, energy as life, as being, in the universe or the cosmos is mm -hmm. to experience is that kind of what you're maybe seeing in one of my first journeys uh, when i first really took off and was really starting to understand what i'd gotten myself into and was really starting to experience the the full uh, force of a boga my guide came over and said to me he said dylan what do you see and i instantly without hesitation replied yeah i said everything all at once and right now and i meant it absolutely everything all at once and right now yeah. and so it's it's an interesting it's an interesting thing you can't really describe it with language you can't really even touch on it with language um, because we're always yeah. looking you know for uh, to intellectualize and analyze things and it doesn't really fit thinking, into thinking, any of thinking. that yeah yeah thinking 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 that's what we got that's in our tool shed you know so um, you know, that works to, that works to, you know, uh, get your bills paid, I guess, or whatever, you know, or to, I mean, being a, being an avatar in the third dimension. Well, I want to just sh share this with you. Cause as I told you, I've done five mm -hmm. uh, toad experiences and, uh, and we're very similar in that, um, we've experienced it all. I mean, I, you know, I call it the, the, the source field, right. like where everything and, and where's everything and nothing. It's like, like you said, there's no words, but the, the way that I can explain it for a, average person to understand it if i can even do that is it is a harmonic frequency mm -hmm. so i feel you know energetically as if i'm kind of out of my body like i explained it like when i watched my wife trip her journey the first time she had done it and she's done it twice now too but the first time she literally was like an energy slinky excited to see this physical avatar that she's clearly not right because she's like oh wow i mean she was literally saying this she's like wow i, I have a body <laughs> yeah and then she and then she was like literally like a minute later and right you know there's a small circle of six people in the shaman and and then she's like and i have a really good body and i'm watching <laughs> it and i'm like you know, it, 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 true, true story. The shaman is very, very stayed, you know, legit, you know, 2000 plus journeys. He literally looked up at me and he winked at me. <laughs> and she did that. And I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was just so fucking weird. But, um, I mean, so, so what I would say is 
the experience of, you know, back to what you were saying earlier of God, of source consciousness, again, this is just to me and nobody knows what it is, but it's an energy of like, it's, it's a vibrational frequency. Mm-hmm. Like if somebody can go into an ohm or an ah, uh, but more of an ohm. Mm-hmm. And when I hear that, like, you know, and I can take myself because of my work, my internal work, I can take myself into that, like sitting in nature in the morning mm-hmm. and just feeling my body like floating in that right. field. Right. 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 So, so like to me, that is that aspect of like what you're saying of like everything and nothing. And it's like, when you can get to that level of consciousness or awareness or that experience, or I, again, there's no words. That's how I kind of like relate it. And, and, and I feel like now that you're kind of saying, yeah, right. A lot of us who have gone down these journeys and these paths have, 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 have known this. And it, and it goes back to what you said earlier in the show that, you know, once you've gone there, there's no more fear. What, what would you have fear for? Fear is the first thing to go. That's one of the things I learned early on in my experience with Yahe, which is ayahuasca. But uh, to, listening to what you're saying, it reminds me of two particular journeys that I had, one on Iboga and one with ayahuasca. One of them on Iboga, I, I very much, and you, we could do a whole show on trip reports, which would be quite fascinating. But That would be amazing. Um, one, of them, one of them in Iboga, I very much um, was drawn out of my physical body and was able to see the karmic loop. Uh, the, yeah. the, the the loop of reincarnation and i saw it as i could describe it as like a tunnel right and and you uh, you're like here is like the ether like this space and then you wrap back around and you start at the beginning of tunnel which would be birth or you know your entry into the womb as a fetus right and then and then your birth and then you live your life however long or short that is and then when that life ends it's extinguished you're turned into this like to me it was like almost the sense of vapor right uh, like a, like a cloud of consciousness is the best way that i could describe it and that consciousness lays low and kicks back loops back around and ultimately comes back in to have the experience. And when it goes back again, it could be uh, 2,000 years prior. It could be 10,000 years later. It could be inner time. There's no uh, linearity. There's no linearness right. to it, right? Another experience that I had, one of the many, many journeys I've had with uh, Yahe, um, which is kind of, it's kind of, it's, you never know what you're going to get with either one of these medicines. Let me say mm-hmm. it like that. One time journeying with one of the elder Sequoia shaman, a man named Don Delphine, who I talked about in a recent podcast, um, um, just a, uh, an, an amazing, amazing elderly man. He recently passed away, but uh, under his, under his guidance one night, it was an experience like I'd never had before. Never had since it was like drink a little bit immediately leave all consciousness of your body. And what, what I was left with, what I was left with was my, the sense of my spirit, my soul, my, my energy field uh, was on top of a mountain. It looked like Africa, but I was overlooking everything and it was all golden light and rivers wow. and fertile valleys and everything. And it the feeling of it was one of, of pure consciousness was a pure energy. So that's definitely out there, you know, and I don't know if that's all there is to it, you know, and even still when I explain it, I hear myself uh, putting context to it, you know, rivers, valleys, mountains and stuff. So perhaps right. there's even 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 more as well. But, yeah, when you come back from something like this and you land back in your body, you're like, oh, smokes. Wait a what? second. Hold on. Like I had I wasn't thinking about this body at all, you know, and, and in right. fact, another another cool story that I love to share is uh, one of the first times I drank drank Yahe after a. Uh, a 10 day retreat. It was the last ceremony that we had. And it was, I went really, really deep. Let me just say like that. No, this was actually the night before I I went on one of the second ceremonies I had. And, uh, I basically entered a space where all of a sudden, um, my being felt like, uh, like a supercharged, like ball of light, if you will, but underneath a mountain. So the mountain was constructed of layers of egoic identity. And so wow. something reached down into the mountain and started pulling me up through the mountain up above the mountain. And I wasn't ready for it. I was not ready for it at all. And so on the bottom layers of the mountain, it was like, it was like liftoff. Like we were launching, like we were leaving, we were leaving the stratosphere. And now when it pulled me out, it started to break apart the, the, the terra of this mountain that I, that I had around me. And so it was like, this voice was like, Hey, so what's your name? And I was like, my name's Dylan. It's like, <laughs> whatever. That's just like a word that somebody <laughs> threw at that you. So, up. And then it, a chunk of the mountain falls off. And then all of a sudden I find myself, I'm like, Holy smokes, I have no name. And then it's like, Hey, what's your job? And I was like, Oh, I'm a sound designer in video games. And it was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And crack that goes off. And then all of a sudden I have no job and I'm like, well, I'm floating out here. I've got no name, no job. And then it, then it, then it was like, what is your life about? And I was like, it's about my wife and my two kids. And then it was like, 
Sorry, nope. bud. I hate to break the news to you, but that's not who you are. And so in that experience, uh, these layers of, of, of earth, right? My kids, my wife, they just broke apart and left and I was left without them. And that sent me, I wasn't ready for it. It sent me into a wave of just tremendous, tremendous grief. Despair. And I started bawling. I started just bawling and crying. And that's when I didn't get to experience the full lift off, the full destruction of my ego. But that's when the, the, the shaman Don Tintin, you can look him up on an amazing man, but Don Tintin Pehaguaye of the Sequoia. Uh, but that's when he, like, that's, that was the first experience I had where I realized with the proper shaman, like, they know what's going on. They're there to help you. They see through everything. And so in that moment, he basically stood up in the ceremony and started making the same sounds, the same, like, whimpering, whining sounds that I was. And I instantly stopped. And he took all that energy from me, wow. pulled it through himself, screamed it out into the, the ceremony hall with 35 people or something that are meditating. And, and he transmuted that over a few minutes. It was, he was wailing and crying. And then he slowly wow. shifted into laughter, like these, these cackling howls. And then it was just pure laughter. And what I was left with when he finally sat down is I just, I sat there for hours and laughed my ass off. It was just hilarious and funny to me. So he was able to transmute that energy and really save me from a process that I just wasn't ready for. So in that sense, in that sense, yeah, with the things, some of the things that I'm, I'm experiencing, it's, it's, it's hard to doubt. It's hard for me to doubt that there's something beyond you know, this, this meat sack, you know, and which is, it's a very liberating place to be. And fear is definitely the first thing to go. You have to be able to risk having those, uh, those experiences that are so big where you lose control of yourself. And so I've seen, I've been around with hundreds of people coming through a friend of mine's place in Costa Rica to do uh, ceremonies. And there's a lot of people, especially the analytical people, Jay, the bean oh. counters, the accountants, the engineers, uh, the doctors, these sorts of people, they, they have a really, really a tight grip of control, uh, an attempted grip of control on, right. on reality. And so it, it, it causes them a lot of pain and suffering often, oftentimes when journeying with these medicines, because like the, the, the death grip they have on their uh, desire to control uh, their experience of life is, uh, is, is, it doesn't jibe with these medicines. These medicines like are there to take that away from you, to release you from that obligation to control things. Let me put this up on this. You, you got me in a trance, dude. I, I, Dude, I always say <laughs> from my heart to your heart, I love and appreciate you, man. Like I know we haven't met in person, but definitely our spirits and our energies have definitely been together. I'm sure in various parts and times and in 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 the history of whatever this is, right? But uh, mm -hmm. I thank you so much for coming on. I do have to ask you one question though, and this is just mm -hmm. an opinion question. Uh, and then of course, you know, talk about how people can connect with you and stuff like that, and coach and all that. But um, do you believe that some people vibrationally should not? Um, partake? I never recommend these medicines to people. Um, I never say, Hey, this is amazing stuff. You know, back in the beginning, you know, in 2011 or so, when I started experiencing this, there was this uh, sense of urgency and you know, this immaturity about it where I thought, you know, sure. oh, we got to get this to the president. Everybody oh, should be here. <laughs> Yeah. world leaders convene here in the jungle, you know, like next yeah, week, right. you know, like it was, it was a big deal. You wanted to proselytize. You wanted to, you know, you wanted to get right. people to heal with this and no, it's absolutely not for everybody. And so I never recommend this. Uh, people who ask me, I will guide them. There's only a couple of recommend recommendations that I can make with certain people that I feel absolutely confident. And outside of that, you know, I've never done these medicines in the United States. Um, but no, you're absolutely right. It's it's not for everybody. And I've seen many people come down in the retreat centers where I've been uh, privileged to, to serve at. I've seen many people come down and try it once and then be like, yeah, it's not for me and leave. You know, so I know for a fact that it's not for everybody. Not everybody is vibrationally, like you said, uh, equipped to handle this or even called to it. So I always advise people to search within themselves. If it's a calling, then answer the call, right? You know, there's only so many times you can uh, ignore the call, whether it's the hero's journey, right? You know, that 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 call uh, uh, to take that journey to leave the Shire and find out what you're you're really made of. You know, a lot of people uh, uh, just keep hanging up the phone, keep hanging up the phone, keep hanging up the phone. But for some people, the phone doesn't ring. But, I mean, I'm, I'm glad. By the way, I mean, obviously, we are very vibrationally aligned in that. I've seen. And and by the way, two of my journeys have been in the States and I really wish they weren't, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm with you hundred percent. And I, I don't care if people get mad. There are, yeah, there, yeah. there are people that are vibrationally not ready or aligned for this. And there, as you know, bro, you've seen it. I mean, there is definitely great risk to people who are locked mm -hmm. in fear to go down these paths. 
Also, also too, I mean, and I've seen this in a, in a couple of very, very profound, very shocking cases. One of them was one of them was with myself, but I've seen people, uh, you know, in all the journeys that I've had and all the groups that I've participated in, uh, the two biggest freakouts I've ever seen, one of them was me. <laughs> so I don't know sure. what that says. I don't know, like, I don't really know what the meaning of that is, but like, you know, talking about screaming, having to be tied up, gagged, yeah. you know, like, I mean, like, yeah. And so, so it is, it is very possible for people to go through uh, psychic splits, right. To, uh, to disassociate themselves from these things. And, 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 in my experience, that's not always a bad thing. It actually can be quite a positive thing sure. because it's a, it's a release of toxic energy, perhaps even some kind of entity, you know, it's almost, you can almost equate it to an exorcism, right? Um, like the, um, uh, the, the space allows, whatever presence or entities that are feeding off you, you know, and Rudolf Steiner talks about this stuff too, oh. you know, about like these, these, these entities that feed off of fear and anxiety, like they get in and they attach themselves, these attachments. Um, right. And so a lot of people have those. And so in those environment, it can trigger those coming out and it can be quite scary and quite startling. Um, you know, so there yeah. is, it's not I, like. I they call them the flyer, the Wittico yeah, or the Castaneda. flyers or the predators or whatever. I mean, you know, yeah. whether Castaneda or not, was my <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Castaneda was the first books I read on this kind of stuff. Yeah. I was very intrigued by that. And yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, so it's, it's definitely like uh, s some people don't need this medicine. There's also people too who are perfectly at peace without it, you know? And well, I will tell you this, man, I will do this if I am in a love in the presence of a loving person in my inner circle who wants to do this so that I can experience with them. But I, I you know, after I did it twice. And the first time that I did it was the most p powerful, cathartic, crying, like right. absolutely yep. transmuted the room type stuff. I didn't have a shaman like you did, but like, I mean, I literally came out of it and the entire circle was crying, like right. out absolutely. of control crying. So yep. I transferred all that energy and it was definitely, I mean, for me, I know for sure that it was ancestral trauma. Like I got literally rid, rid of right transpersonal right. and intergenerational trauma from fam my family. And I, and I really right. feel that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I will do it, but I, dude, I'm not going to lie to you. Like I literally now through my work and, you know, obviously the experience of that, I can go into a field. It always goes back to nature. Right. But I can go and lay into a field uh, or a forest or wherever. And, you know, in isolation and just lay down and get into my meditative, you know, my arm awesome. um, yeah. and just, I'm there. Mm -hmm. I'm back there. Now I'm not going to sit there for days, but I mean, I can literally sit there for 45 minutes to 90 minutes. You know, usually it's 45 to, to 60 and it's like, wow, like everything is right back there. Like, it's just like this ability to get right back there. And, and I don't know if that's, you know, a gift or if that's just from my work, you know, there, but like, I, you know, I tell people like, I can, I mean, honestly, dude, like I could just go right into it right now, just sitting here, you know, and just like, I mean, it takes me about a minute. You know, and I don't need all this toxic, you know, blue light and white light and all the other things, right? Because I mean, that's some of the frequencies that these things are entering. But, um, bro, I don't really have anything else to say other than that I appreciate you coming <laughs> on here today. I mean, you, you you shared so much amazing stuff. I mean, like I said, I'm going to move this right to the front. I definitely want to get your cell phone so we, you and I can connect and bro it out. Yeah, but, that'd be um, awesome. Yeah, yeah I, I definitely want to um, talk to you about an aboga ceremony because it sounds absolutely awe-inspiring to me it's it's they're life-changing yeah boga is a life-changing medicine you know and a lot of people turn to it to get find freedom from opiate addiction you know so it's right. got that reputation and it's intense i mean it's a stimulant so there's some there's more risks risks with it than there is with ayahuasca but uh for the sturdy it is uh, it can be a powerful yeah. powerful force of awakening yeah so uh, but well, if you're ever called for the, uh, you know, for the toad, I mean, I literally have an indigenous uh, shaman in the Baja, Mexico, who's trained <laughs> in the rainforest. Nice, nice. So, yeah, I mean. Yeah, the toad I, hasn't I, called me. Combo hasn't called me. Uh, I've done I've done DMT, not 5-MEO, DMT once with a friend of mine. Oh, He's a Changa sorcerer. So. Yeah, no comparison. So, I mean, yeah. So, uh, yeah. And it's like I was recently invited to a peyote ceremony and I had never done peyote. And I, I like two days before the event, I was like, this isn't really calling me. Got you know, it. and I, I bowed out and I stepped out. So I think that's a really important part of the process. And that's really, that's really one of the important messages of it is really tuning into your intuition and figuring out what's right for you. And this so very much links back into self-sabotage and like the way yeah. that our power is taken away, you know, the way that we're set up to be manipulated, coerced, robbed from, stolen from, overtaxed, uh, inflated, you know, like, the, 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 like, like we're set up to uh, be okay with that. We're set up to tolerate this. And, and, and so, yeah, like finding, 
finding a connection to your intuition, finding a way to access yeah. your power in this like morass of confusion and chaos is is really the best thing that you can do. And you don't need plant medicines for this. No, 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 no. Um, you know, but so, I think it I think it does help a lot of people again who are vibrationally uh, mm -hmm. ready for it to become more awake slash aware to true reality. And, and by the way, I wanted to say something to you. And you know, I got this from one of my mentors, but like he believes or has, or still does, you know, that his statement is it takes a pure heart to discern <laughs> truth. Yeah. Right? I agree with that. Yeah. So, yeah. so like if you're not pure in heart awareness, and again, so many people have their heart shock or their heart center blocked. They're just, mm -hmm. I mean, they're not conscious. Let's not, you know, go any deeper, but it's like, you really have to have that open to truly like be able to like discern, as you said, because we are literally in a, we're in the realm of illusion. This is the Maya. It's the matrix. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you something. Would you consider yourself to be an empath? My wife is a tremendous empath. Like you should see her. She's like the Pied Piper with animals. Interesting. Cause your, your story about your story about crying in the ceremony and then having everybody else respond to that in kind. I mean, I have to be bro. I mean, I, but I don't feel that I'm like super in touch with my empathic mm -hmm. qualities, but I mean, I know that I am because I'm a healer. I mean, this is what I do like worldwide. Right, right. Like when I help people, I'm healing. Have you right? considered, like have you considered, have you considered that an experience like what you had might be something a little bit different, you know, like, and, and I'm thinking about several experiences I've had where, it's as though other people's pain, and this is really, I think, what the shaman does, right? Other people's pain, like you're able to get, like other people's pain comes out of them into you, and then you transmute that into a physical vibration, be it voice, sound, tears, whatever it is, shaking uncontrollably, screaming, running naked into the jungle, throwing yourself into a fire or mud pit, stripping off your clothes, shoving mud into your vagina, you know, like, like, you know, like these, right? But doing those sorts of things, have you considered that, like, you know, part of that is, 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 is someone who has uh, a greater like empathic channel open in their lives, pulling and helping other people to transmute their own energy, because that's it's the definitely possible. I mean, yeah. it's definitely yeah. possible for me um, because I know that my purpose and mission is heal. It's mm -hmm. like to, you know, lead by example, how do people help themselves physiologically, mentally? And now, you know, obviously in the last two or three years, it's been about spirituality, right? Cause like I was always yeah. the guy, the hormone master, and then I went to Peru. No, I mean, seriously. I mean, I went to yeah, Peru. Yeah. I mean, dude, you know, my internet claim to fame is all the books I've written on hormones. But like, I went to Peru in 2019 and I literally looked at my wife and I was like, that guy's dead. Like, it's all about raising consciousness. There's nothing else. Mm -hmm. There is nothing else. If we cannot teach humanity to raise their field, you know, to raise their vibration, to increase consciousness, it doesn't matter. Dude, and this is this is where the rubber meets the road because a lot of people, Jay, have this perception that raising your consciousness requires some sort of enlightening out of body or spiritual right, experience. Right, and so this right, is one yeah. thing like with my with my one on one clients, I really work with this in great detail with them, and that is understanding just the simple map of consciousness. Perhaps you're familiar with the work of David Hawkins, but he looks at consciousness like a ladder. Oh, there you go. Right. He looks at consciousness like a ladder, right? And at the uh, the bottom of the ladder are the frequencies that most people are caught up in. I mean, Hawkins says that he, you know, it's probably 80, 85 percent of people are operating in 85 percent below the line of integrity. Exactly. Right. It, shame, guilt, apathy, fear, doubt, self doubt, uncertainty, worry, anxiety, uh, hate, resentment, anger. Uh, when you're operating in these states, these are very contractive states of consciousness, right. but anybody can access the quality of courage at any moment in their lives. And once you hit exactly. that quality of courage, your, your, your morphogenetic field, like right? your, your energy field of consciousness elevates into these expansive states. Right. People are always trying to get ahead. They're trying to, they're trying to get ahead financially. They're trying to get ahead socially. They're trying to get ahead career wise, but you can't get ahead. You're not going to attract the experiences, people, opportunities, um, and um, uh, networks that you need in order to get ahead if you're operating in those states of consciousness. So most people feel like that's some esoteric woo thing that has to be no. done in a ceremony or in an ashram or something. But in reality, you can use this stuff every single day to pull yourself up into uh, courage, willingness, acceptance, peace, joy, enlightenment, uh, love, right? So you can do this at any moment in any, any day once you learn the skills of doing so. And this is something I, I see, really I see literally the books behind you, the eye. I see the eye of the eye. Yeah, that was no, we're, we're, we're so, we're so, <laughs> we're, we're so cut from the same cloth. Like I'll leave you Excellent. with these two things. And by yeah. the way, I mean, here we are now an hour and 20 minutes. Amazing. <laughs> so, and I know you know this, but a lot of people don't, you know, people will say to me two things and, and, and I've obviously thought on this, but they're like, dude, you're always talking about how to raise your vibration. 
Right. Give me your one minute elevator pitch. So this is my one minute elevator pitch, right? It's okay, okay. serving creation. Cause it's not just humanity. As you know, it's low life at your highest and best capacity without expectation. Okay. Or, and now my mind just literally escaped the other word. Uh, there's one, there's one other word to it, but that's, but that's so like, if you're, a, if you're a janitor or you're a CEO, it doesn't matter because are you doing what you do with love and joy and intent, positive intention every day at your highest and best? Oh, it's expectation or uh, attachment. So it's like, you know, that's, that's what raising your vibration is. So that, you know, counters across everybody else. And then, and I, I think you know this, but people will say, but what about unconditional love? Like, how can you really experience that? Well, that's simple. You literally go and be with your dog and bask in your dog's energy field. When they're yeah. wagging their do- tail, that's 540 or higher. <laughs> yeah. So I'm serious. Like I literally tell people all the time, go and love your dog when he's going crazy or she's going crazy and they're wagging their tail because that energy field that they're generating is now you're going to be your energy field. Because as you know, it's just harmonic resonance. Mm-hmm. That harmony is now your harmony. So do it. You know, and I tell people all the time, they get stressed out during the day. I'm like, leave your office. Hopefully you're at home. You're not in a cubicle. <laughs> and run down and just spend five to 10 minutes with your dog. It'll literally change everything for you. But yeah. I mean, we have a little, we have a little really long haired chihuahua and it's like, if you need love, that's where you go. Yeah. I mean, yeah, dude. I mean, we have a pit. He's in here right now. I, I mean, I have a blue nose pit and we have a, you know, a rat dog, but it's a half Yorkie half mix and they're both amazing. And the Yorkie is the alpha dominance. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, cause yeah. it's all hierarchical and instinctual with animals and stuff like that. But, uh, man, bro, I, I, I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming on, man. Um, what's the best way for people to re work with you, you know, connect with you, podcast with you. How, how do you have them do that? Um, I set up a page on my website. My website is dylancharlescoaching.com. I set up a page that's dylancharlescoaching.com slash J. And so I have everything there. You can subscribe to my newsletter. It's called on the path. I send that out every week, week and a half or so. Yeah. Um, I have a link to Battered Souls, my podcast, uh, Waking Times. You can go check out Waking Times. But on there also, too, as a as a coach, I just love talking with people all over the world and seeing what their experiences are. And so if you were interested in finding out what that's about, I offer free 15-minute insight calls, I call them. We can just chat for 15, 20 minutes, and you can throw your challenges to somebody who just loves people and will hear, listen objectively. You know, And I'm a, I'm a human design projector, so that really fills my soul, getting the opportunity to reflect back to you what you may be not be hearing for yourself. Uh, so yeah, dylancharlescoaching.com slash jay. I have a couple of things up there too. Um, one is I just did a course uh, called Crack the Code of Self-Sabotage. It's a two-part nice. course. So it's about three, a little over three hours of, of, of content. The first part is why do we self-sabotage? So it really looks at how the brain is triggered into defaulting to these subconscious programs that you've picked up from all of the negative repetitive pattern and sure. patterning in your tribe in this crazy society. And then part two is all about solutions. It's all about the things that you can do to operate at the highest function of your mind and also switch out those patterns to, to tell your subconscious minds that you've left your dysfunctional, overweight, uh, obese, uh, broke, uh, 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 chaotic, dramatic tribe, and that you've, you've now, you're now part of a healthy, winning, successful tribe. So uh, that's a really powerful course that I have there. That's available. And then also in a few weeks, I'm teaching a, a four-week, what I call a virtual retreat called Recoding Your Inner Voice, because I feel like a lot of people are really stuck in these negative loops of talk. And so there's very simple, uh, there's a very simple like process you can go to help people break that down and understand why they're hearing what they're hearing in their head. Uh, who's, whose voice is it really? What is that voice really trying to, to do? And, and it's always trying to keep you safe and protect you from something. But for most people, it sounds like, oh, you're not good enough. Oh, you'll never have that or you can't afford that, or you should have done this differently, or you should do this differently. And so a lot of times it's just this berating negative, negative uh, voice in people's heads that when you actually take the time and put the intention into like recoding that, reflipping, flipping that script around, it's, it's really very, very helpful to, uh, to change your inner dialogue with yourself. And it's, it's actually pretty simple, but really, really powerful work. So I have a workshop that I'm, I'm starting on April 26th for that. So if you go to dylancharlescoaching.com slash J, you can find out more about that as well. And it's, 
Yeah, man, this is work that I love doing. You know, it was uh, quite a shock uh, for COVID for me because I, you know, in 2019, I went down to my teacher's place in Costa Rica and spent uh, you know, almost two weeks there helping out with groups of people and, you know, cooking brew in the jungle, sure. cooking vines, cooking brew, uh, hosting ceremonies, singing, you know, like all of the stuff that we do to heal people in that environment. And I really thought that's where my medicine was, but COVID came along and really helped me to realize that like, uh, I have to be grounded. I have to be grounded, obviously in my house, in my community, in my own body and in and, and soul. So what can I do with the experiences that I have to help people make drastic transformations in their life with what I know, but without the help of these, uh, these really, really cosmic experiences. So that's work that I absolutely love doing. I work with people one-on-one -on -one, so you can, you can find out about that. And then, uh, also do group stuff once in a while. Dude, yeah. you're the man. So guys and man. gals, uh, <laughs> support this amazing person and all of the amazing people that come on the Jay Campbell podcast. Go to his website, dylancharlescoaching.com forward slash Jay. He's got all sorts of stuff, courses, content, uh, even one-on-one -on -one coaching. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon. Thank you so much, Jay. I really appreciate it. It's been an honor having, uh, having being here with you.